I love DMA because it comes right out of the community. It comes from people who care about media, who care about information, who care about making sure that stories are told that aren't usually told. Whether it's music we don't normally hear on the radio, or it's news stories we don't normally hear, or it's people we don't normally see on a television screen. I care about DMA because these stories and these people get heard and seen and appreciated. Uh, I think it's an important piece of our democracy and as, our, as a nation of people who are thinking and curious and creative to build our connections with each other and to strengthen our communities on a very local level. This year started with bad news on the national media scene, woeful tales about net neutrality and mega mergers between telecom giants. Earlier this year, I wrote, what role does one rather small community media center play in the larger media landscape? Of what import are things such as an archive of 10,000 locally produced programs, a quarter century of local election programming, and a non-commercial space on the radio dial? And why does any of this matter? My answer was, local content matters. Commercial media is often costly, doesn't invite participation, and represents a narrow spectrum of voices owned by a very few companies. Non-commercial community media fills a critical need, teaching both digital literacy and media production, all while highlighting the voices of nonprofits, community activists, marginalized voices, and perspectives outside the mainstream. Davis Media Access, or DMA, fills this need in Yolo County, partnering with schools, local governments, community groups, and people like you. As DMA celebrated its 25th anniversary this year, and in September kicked off Cater its 10th anniversary year, we worked hard to demonstrate our value in this community. Throughout the year, DMA staff and large volunteer base produced two cycles of local election coverage in June and November. We trained kids and youth in video production, stop motion animation, and location-based recording. We trained community members in video production, post-production, social media, and radio broadcast. We helped highlight musicians from near and far, providing an audience for them and music for all of us. DMA was on the job to cover congressional town halls, local forums, and TEDx events, school sports and performing arts, civic gatherings, and so much more. I offer my heartfelt thanks to DMA's board, its staff and volunteers, its underwriters and supporters, and to the City of Davis, the Davis Joint Unified School District, and our many community partners. Here's to the year that was, and all those yet to come. Please enjoy this look back at 2014. Davis Media Access is a tremendous community resource. I've been fortunate to work with them on recording things like the annual Martin Luther King community celebration, the Davis High School annual commencement, and even the U.S. Bicycling Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. The folks there, the volunteers, are passionate and knowledgeable, and it's a great resource for our community. And I can't conceive of Davis without it, so let's hope for many more years of success and uh, community support. Davis Media Access is a community media center serving Davis, California, and surrounding areas. DMA's main projects are DCTV Channel 15 on the Comcast cable system, public access television, Educational Access Channel 17. Both channels also air on AT&T UVerse at Menu 99. DMA operates KDRT LP 95.7 FM, low power community radio for Davis and beyond. Through partnerships with the City of Davis and Davis Joint Unified School District, DMA provides the public with access to video and television equipment, training, and unique programming. We round out our offerings with digital equipment and social media, topical workshops, several local programming archives, participation in open source projects, youth media projects, local studio productions, event coverage, and advocacy and information for broader media issues. Davis Media Access gave me an outlet to to um, show my my skills and creativity. You know, I was able to do things with the youth, providing um, their services, and I'm very grateful for their um, the opportunity of being able to produce 
television programs on this station. Thank you. My name is Jesse Jew, and I'm a professor here at UC Davis. I teach a radio production class, uh, and we produce a, a program here with students called Technocult Radio. Davis Media Access has been a fantastic resource to get students off campus and into the community. One of the um, requirements of the class is they produce segments of interest to the, the greater community uh, of Davis, uh, as well as uh, other segments on campus life, uh, developments in science and technology, sports, music, culture, etc. And uh, I have used Davis Media Access for years, and I hope it continues for many years. Thanks. Hi, my name is Peter Pasteur. I'm a volunteer on the KDRT side of Davis Media. Davis Media has given me a tremendous opportunity to become part of a family that contributes to uh, the community here uh, of Davis, and matter of fact, the larger community around Davis. I interview musicians on a, day, on a weekly basis, and it's interesting to see how these musicians, at many times, it's their first time on radio, and they just come alive. You can see it in their eyes, you can hear it in their music. The other show is Live in the Loam, where Doug Kelly and I interview musicians that are traveling through the area, and that's why it's called a pop-up show. We are creating the show time uh, to accommodate their time frame and not ours. So thank you, Davis Media, for uh, a wonderful opportunity, not just for me, but for the artistic community in Davis. Davis Community Television DCTV is the heart of DMA and where it all started 25 years ago. As a public access channel, DCTV welcomes all members of the community to learn all aspects of hands-on video production, from planning to studio production to editing and distribution. Founded in 1988, DCTV has grown from a single public access channel to the media center it is today. DCTV airs non-commercial programming produced by local volunteers and sponsored programming produced elsewhere but sponsored by a community member. To provide regular training opportunities and a platform for exploring issues of local interest, DMA produces four episodes of In the Studio each month. These shows are managed by DMA staff but crewed and sometimes produced by volunteers who contributed over 450 hours of time to this effort in 2014. DMA also produces local election programming and events such as PSA Day, which highlights local nonprofits. As resources allow, DMA covers local events of note, from public meetings to lectures, forums, and celebrations. In 2014, we launched From the Vault, to highlight some of the more than 10,000 locally produced programs in the DCTV archive. Hello, I'm Ruth Chambers, and I'm one of the many volunteer producers here at Davis Media Access. I started probably about, oh, 10 years ago. Uh, it was something to do, something I was interested in. And I started with uh, Granny Muffin Reads. I was trying to deal with uh, what can I be now that I'm an older person? Well, I could be a granny. So I was granny of Granny Muffin Reads. And then after that, I did um, Granny Muffin's Traveling Puppet Show involving puppets, of course. <laughs> and of course, uh, it was a means of self-expression, a, a chance to share. I like sharing, and I like reading stories. And so uh, we proceeded on to a show that I produced with uh, Alex Silva Satter, and it was a seasonal um, literature show, like all the holidays, the different holidays of the year, and we did that. And then I started my radio show, the Chambers Street Theater, and that's on right now, so you can tune in. Then there's, um, well, I was very fortunate. I was invited to participate with Bryce Parker. So not only was I doing my, my things, but I got to be a participant in someone else's show. And his show is called The Rectangular Age. And I'm sure you can find it online with Davis Media Access. You can be a doer, you can be a viewer. We need viewers. And of course, you can always be a doer and come on down. It's Davis Media Access. We'll see you. 
DMA is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of Educational Access Channel 17. In partnership with school district staff, DMA staff manages the production and promotion of Channel 17's schedule, its high school internship program, its website at djusd.davismedia.org, and related initiatives. In addition, we work with many DJUSD teachers and parent liaisons. Many recordings are made onto DVDs, which are then sold to benefit parent booster groups such as Davis Schools Orchestral Music Association. DMA's internship is competitive and well utilized. Interns from Davis High, Da Vinci, and King High Schools are trained in production, post production, and digital file management, and with their help last year, we recorded programs such as volleyball and football games, Davis Community Idol, Everybody Dance Now, DHS Jazz Extravaganza, a tribute to Tony Fields, all high school graduations, and secondary orchestra and band performances. So when I graduated from college, I didn't really know what I was going to do and I majored in communications and I just kind of felt a little bit lost and I think that's the case for a lot of college students but I came back home to Davis and suddenly I heard about Davis Media Access and I actually hadn't heard of it before even though I grew up in Davis and I decided to check it out so I contacted the station and they just said come on in and you'll learn the ropes and you know, just see, see if you like being here. So I was like, okay, sure. So I just came in and everyone was extremely warm, extremely knowledgeable. And so, I mean, it was really odd. Like I never did anything related to media specifically, but when I came in, I just kind of felt like this is the right place. From a scrappy station that struggled to get on the air, 10 years on KDRT has found an audience and, thanks to social media and online archives, an ever-expanding listener base. KDRT is proud of its role in facilitating critical audience development for independent musicians. In 2000, what was then the DCTV Board of Directors authorized our application for a low-power FM frequency. We launched the station on September 24, 2004, and KDRT, where the grassroots grow, took root in our community. Originally located at 101.5 FM, the station is found today at 95.7 FM. DMA holds the license and provides organizational support for KDRT, though KDRT's day-to-day -day operations are the purview of the all-volunteer KDRT management team. Since launching, the station has diversified the community's media options. Davisites have a choice of media, varied training programs for different ages and abilities, and an opportunity to broadcast and receive local content via free radio. KDRT is nationally known for its leadership on low-power FM radio and locally has become a bright light and center of alternative arts and culture in Davis. I'm Rocket, I'm 14 years old, and I'm the host of Rocket Radio at KDRT. I'm Penelope Drew, and I've been helping Rocket, my brother, do his radio show. I started this when I was 10, and one of my first shows was doing the interviews at the science fair in elementary school. And I did that a couple years afterwards, and it's been a great thing to do, and I've loved doing it always. And Penelope, anything? I started helping Rocket when I was eight. And Penelope's been on the show frequently since. And it's, it's great to hear from her because she has a very keen eye from the elementary school perspective. And I'm in, jun I'm in junior high. I go to Holmes Junior High School. And um, I really love doing this show. I think it's a great contribution to the community. And I think it's an excellent thing to do. You really don't see a lot of kids on the radio or hear a lot of kids on the radio. And I really wish you did. And so I'm really glad that I get to do this. And I think it's changed me. I think it's made me a very open person. And I really love doing it. I think it makes me like talking and like sharing and like being around people. I think it's definitely motivated, motivated me to be involved with some theater things. I was in a school production in seventh grade, and I'm going to be in production in ninth grade, and I've been involved with ACME, the local theater company, and I think that this has definitely helped with that too. Um, I also think this has been a great experience. Um, so we love doing it, and we hope to continue doing it for a lot longer. Thank you.